And Sam, I got to tell you, I'm glad you're back. I know Alex Cora said the 6 a.m. show can be tough, so we appreciate your, <laughs> your we appreciate your tenacity. I feel like we're teddy bears over here, yeah. but I'm glad you're back. Well, it's always fun to see what stupid things I can say on the radio first thing in the morning. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, it's a good day to be on today. Uh, eight of the last ten won by the Red Sox, a sweep of the Blue Jays, and five in a row, I believe, for this team. So uh, I won't ask you about uh, whether that is uh, they are overachieving or underachieving, but are you impressed? <laughs> are, you imp- are you impressed with what they're doing right now? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we got off to sort of a 500 type of start in April and May. Been playing really good baseball in June. It's been really fun to see and rewarding, and uh, just a credit to everybody down there. Been uh, been been really great. We're got a long way to go, but um, we're uh, we're feeling good about uh, the last couple of weeks. That's for sure. Especially when you're playing good baseball against teams like the Yankees and the Phillies and and Toronto. So uh, we got to keep it going. We were talking about it earlier. Sunday night, this team did something that I believe has only been done 10 times since 1918, and, and, and that is uh, stealing nine bases. Is that, in your mind, an example of what Alex Cora gives you that other managers may not? Yeah, I mean, speed and athleticism and, and youth can be really really fun to watch and in today's game you you see how important it is and so yeah it's been kind of a hallmark of the team it's it's who we are i think it defines this group and um it's it's really a fun brand of baseball and and i think people really recognize what's happening over here at, at fenway and so it's uh, it's exciting to see these guys come into their own and and play with the confidence and and energy and enthusiasm that um, we've 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 recognized. So it's it's a, it's a good thing and um, really been enjoyable. Sam, to hear that Justin Turner uh, had the conversation with Alex Cora last season about going elsewhere to get money and win a championship, and if he wanted to win a championship, he'd have to go you know not elsewhere. D- does that hurt you to hear that Alex Cora is saying that, or is that just the mind of a manager and someone being upfront with someone they respect? Well, look, uh, there's no no more supportive manager of his players than than Alex, and uh, I think everybody recognizes the contributions that Justin Turner made while he was here. In a short time, people fell in love with him, and uh, when guys move on, you want to be supportive. But look, Alex Cora, from the first team meeting that we had down at spring training to the the first all Zoom uh, player meeting, he's been talking about uh, a World Series mindset, and and that's what makes him so special. Is is instilling that belief in guys and, and getting the most out of players. That's that's what Alex Cora uh, does as well as anybody in baseball. I know that you respectfully don't talk about deals until deals are done or midseason or whatever it is. But just from a fan perspective, those who you just talked about how special Alex Cora is, it, 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 I think fans would like to know kind of where his future is at and and whether or not it is the intention of this team to keep him here are 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 you guys internally saying we want to do everything that we want to do to keep him or is that a decision that from your perspective might be up to Alex Cora at at the end of this season well look uh we've been pretty open in in public that when we went through uh, a difficult change last September in baseball operations um, when you when you bring in you make a change at the general manager level and you bring in a new leader, uh, the decision around the manager rests with the general manager. We've been clear about that um, and just cannot say enough about how Alex has handled that, the staff has handled that, and how Brez has handled it. They're building their relationship and conversations about Alex's future will be held at the appropriate time between those two guys and. Um, we'll leave it at that, but uh, just really appreciate how how everybody's handled it. Sam, I I totally hear you, and you've been consistent with that. When we were in Springfield, you said, you know, Craig and Alex were going to work together and see how that goes. I just, it sounds a lot like the Bogart stuff, where it's like, we want him, he loves it here, we can't envision that. And I just take what Alex Cora told Justin Turner, 
and I take the number of interviews the com the the Red Sox had to conduct before they found Craig Breslow as the replacement for Heim Bloom as signs that people see the direction and it's not what they want when it comes to spending. Why, why am I wrong in having that opinion given those events? Well, look, uh, it's, it's um, the opinions and narrative and, and feel is that that's, that's nothing that we can, we can control that. That's something that, um, you know, you, you put out there or others put out there. Um, the, the simple truth is that we have a incredibly exciting baseball team right now and an exciting baseball project that is being built. And you can see it playing out in front of your, your eyes with an exciting group of young players who are committed and they're homegrown and they're, they're really focused in playing a great brand of baseball. And the only way for the Red Sox ownership and, and management and leadership for, for me in, in, in our role is to, to do the right things that lead to competitive teams that are playing in the postseason and winning World Series championships. That's all that matters. That's the goal. That's always been the goal since we've been here. I got here in 2002. Um, and the only way to change narrative or to um, create, you know, a, a, a meeting of expectations is to win a championship. And that's what we need to do here. And it's just an, been an amazing time in Boston. Congrats to the to the Celtics, uh, Wick and Steve and the whole team over there just did an amazing job. And it's been an incredible era in Boston sports, and it continues. And so we need to get the Red Sox back to where they belong, and that's playing baseball in the postseason. And we're doing everything in our power to get there. But we recognize when – when you have disappointing seasons um, like 2023 and 2022, and, and we've had certainly we've made tons of mistakes in our two and a half decades here. Um, there's been some high highs and some low lows. We understand that that people are going to be upset and frustrated. That's what makes us the best baseball market in the country. We accept that. We acknowledge it. We own it. And uh, we, we just have to get back where we belong and, and everything else will take care of itself. Sam, I just would say, though, you weren't asked questions about the investment in the team in 2018. You, you and John and Tom wildly invested and in, smartly invested in a great roster that won the World Series. I, the reason the questions persist today is because the most valuable part of this roster from my seat is the manager, and he's in a lame duck situation. And there is the belief among Red Sox fans that no matter how well this team performs, but this team performs between now and July 31st, Craig Breslow and the organization will be unwilling to part with prospects because they don't believe this team is capable of winning a World Series. That was never the narrative for you or the organization back five years ago because they saw it. Yeah, that, that narrative existed prior to 2018. Um, I can remember some really difficult uh, narratives and off-seasons around 2014 and 15 and going back before that in 2009 and 10 and even in 05 and 06. I guess I'm dating myself. And, Chris, I think you're, you're making the exact right point that there was no criticism or narrative when we last won the World Series. Mm -hmm. it, sometimes, you know, you think about it, it's a, a zero-sum game. Um, we, there's a, there's an, a narrative out there when you're not getting it done and you're not playing in the postseason um, that, you know, you're, it's either attributable to a lack of focus and you're involved as – you know, as you just said, or someone just said in soccer and golf or whatever, um, that we understand that we accept that that's, that's fair criticism because we're not, we're not in the postseason. but guess what? That narrative goes away. Um, as you just said, when, when we're playing competitive and when we're in parades and, and popping champagne and we got to get back there full stop, that's on us. That's, that's on Red Sox ownership and management and John and Tom and Mike, myself, 
uh, Brez, we, we need we need to get back there. Tristan Cassis is targeting July 2nd as a return date. But I think the real question is, did he get his dad's permission to tell that Little League story on ESPN? <laughs> uh. I was going to say, I don't know that we, we I don't know we need him back on the field. Maybe he's got a, a future in, in national television broadcasting. He, Tristan's. This is incredible. He's um, what a what a uh, what a great guy and, and most interesting person in baseball. It was it was it was fun to watch and it was, it was great to hear and great to get that type of access and, and insight into um, our players. And, and my gut tells me in 2025 he might be the uh, the star of the Netflix uh, show. We'll, yeah. we'll have to see here. Yeah. Sam, do you at times feel uh, feel like that you're that the Red Sox organization is unfairly criticized because of the whole payroll situation when there looks like there's been a little reset reset button because in 2021 you guys were top ten and these are the the only two years where you're just barely outside the top ten and when you look at what you're doing with this team and where you are you're only. $20 million away from where he was in 2021 when you made it to the ALCS. So do you feel like there's a lot of unfair criticism? Sam, by the way, that spring training bag of merch that you gave Wiggy, has, <laughs> it really paid off. I don't no, know. No, no, no. I'm just, hey, I, I, Sam, I, I know, call I, it like I see it. I don't know. I don't know if you noticed that or not. I don't have any <laughs> objection. Sam, I look at it. Wiggy. <laughs> Wiggy, when the weather turns and you need that winter time uh, uh, merch bag as you're walking around the north end, we, we're here for you. I, no, I, look, I, I, don't, I call I don't it like it's... I see it. That's all, Sam. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not biased in any way. Hurt us the worst. Look, look uh, cri- criticism, criticism, and and being held to the absolute highest standard goes with the territory, and you know that's that's Boston. So. Um, we, we understand it goes with the territory. Is it frustrating? Does it, th- th- I think the thing that, that hurts the most, and it's on us, um, cause we haven't been where we, we want to be, um, in terms of playing baseball in October, the last two seasons, um, is the, the, the notion or the narrative that John Henry or me or Tom or Mike Gordon d- don't care and, and that we're somehow these like, bloodless financially motivated um owners it's just it, it's just not true and but you can scream that from the mountaintop it doesn't matter it, the only way the only way um is to is to to change that is to do the right things to build the type of baseball operation that we believe we're building um with this group of of players and get back to where we belong we we just we we have to do that and we're going to do that, and um, we are we, we understand it. So um, it's the criticism and the and the narrative and, and all that goes with the territory, and, and we accept that. Sam, but I would say that some narratives are created because of the words used by John Henry, and he told the Financial Times that Red Sox fans at times have um, – expectations that are not founded in reality because it's hard to win it's something like a one in 20 one in 30 shot so when red sox fans read that and they see that they're paying the highest ticket prices in baseball that's where you get the narrative that isn't something i said or greg said that's something that john henry said yeah actually an accurate um uh review of what he said was that the team that that fans expect to win it every year um and they should they should expect to win every year. That's that's what we're here for. Um, and when we don't, when we fall short of uh, those expectations, uh, we understand there's going to be criticism. Um, we we play in a city with the best fan base in all of baseball, and I can tell you uh, from spending 23 years with John Henry, he, he he loves this city. He loves the Boston market. You know, he, he was in, like me and others. We were in, in other markets, um, and there's just nothing like baseball in Boston. I mean, he's at Fenway every single night. You guys know that, yeah. and he, he loves this team. We've we've been to the we've been to the mountaintops, and 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 we, we we're hungry for more. And and that starts uh, with John Henry. 
Sam, just to be clear and go back to the Justin Turner comments, so you are you don't believe that Alex Cora or anybody in the front office didn't expect that this team was good enough to win a championship this year? Because that's what it kind of sounded like between the conversation. Listen, like like I said, Courtney, Alex Cora has been talking about belief uh, and getting yourself into that championship mindset from from the first. I was in the first team meeting we had back in February uh, with with John and, and Tom and Brez and, and AC. And he, he he set that uh, goal out there. And he, I know we talked about that on his all player zooms. And and listen, he, when when you're the manager of the Boston Red Sox. You're, you're you're doing everything you can to win every single night, um, and uh, that's that that's what Alex is about. He's also about supporting his players, um, and and that's that's really really important. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. All right, Sam. As always, thank you for taking the time. Will I see you tomorrow night at Hootie? <laughs> Nineties uh, night. We're, 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 we'll be here, Greg. We're okay. always here. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, only want to be with you. I'm. I'm assuming that's the encore. Uh, I suggest that you and I uh, share share a toast during "Only Want to Be with You." All right. Not hold my hand. Not hold my hand is another great one. Too. <laughs> no, I, I, I'd rather hold Wiggy's hand. I, uh, that's yeah. He's in. All right, Sam. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. That is Thanks, that's Sam.